Welcome power plugs around the globe. If you find yourself struggling with where you are in life and you don't quite understand this next chapter of the podcast is for you. Lost in translation, the second installment in the believe it or not series. It was April of 2020 and I was now finally in flow with my gift of writing again. I was in rehearsal for the third play that I had written. We were getting ready for Easter and that's when we got the notification that the city was shutting down and it was now considered unlawful for us to conduct rehearsal. So we canceled the next rehearsal in waiting for word of what was next. And not only was there going to be no play, there was going to be no Easter service and life as we knew it was about to change. We didn't quite understand what COVID was. And I was working at a hospital at that time. There were people who didn't work in the hospital environment that were receiving hazard pay for showing up. And so I decided to uh, message my supervisor and say, you know, is there any word on, on some hazard pay for us? Cause you know, we're like front line in this deal. And he was like, Oh, you know what? Let me check. The danger level of our job dramatically increased the responsibility that we had as healthcare workers increased considerably. And where I worked, not only did we not receive hazard pay, we got a pay decrease. Not only was it a pay decrease, it decreased just enough to where unemployment would not cover the difference. So it's not like you can just quit and say, you know what, this is wrong. I'm just gonna quit, who's hiring? My financial responsibility had not changed, but now my, my income earning capacity had decreased. Uh, my wife who was getting ready to be hired on, uh, on a permanent basis at her job, instead of being hired on, she was let go because she was the last one on. And the business took a hit because of what was happening. So now, here we go. Here's a double hit. And now I'm in a situation where everything I believe in is coming into question and my resolve is being tested because what I'm experiencing versus what I know to be true is now lost in translation. We were singing in, in church, when there was church, how we're blessed. We're blessed when we come and when we go. And I'm believing and I'm like, ah, oh, there's a level of faith that, that is going on prior to this situation. And I'm into it. Believe me when I say I am into it and what I'm experiencing, what is right in front of me, it just doesn't seem to match. I don't know what your situation was then or what your situation is now. Coming through that situation, I learned a very, very important concept that I'm gonna share with you. And that is to honor your placement. But how do you do that? You honor your placement by honoring yourself. Okay, so what does that mean? 
Let's start with what honoring yourself does not mean. Honoring yourself does not mean honoring an unhealthy tradition, nor does it mean honoring an unhealthy or negative reputation of expected negative behavior. It's honoring yourself. So that means doing the best thing in the moment. I'm gonna just break it down to you. Life is a multiple choice test. And there are two categories of choices. There are healthy choices and unhealthy choices. And within those two categories, there are multiple levels. You have good, better, best. And then you have on the flip side, it goes down from there. The choice, as the song says, is yours. You can get with this or you can get with that. And what I've come to understand about life is there are cycles. What happens most often is we get caught in cycles like Groundhog Day when we don't learn the lesson. And that's why some of us keep running into the same situation, just different faces, because we fail to learn the test. And the test is for you. The test is for me to pass. And the beauty of it is you're not going to get it right the first time. That's why it's called a learning process. Honoring your placement is the way to break that cycle and go on to the next cycle of growth. Learning to do the best thing in a moment comes down to understanding the composition of a moment. My wife and I play a game called Sequence. It's a game of both chance and a game of strategy. You don't know the cards that you're gonna be dealt. But whatever hand you're dealt, you play that hand to the best of your ability. You can see the cues in the hand that you're dealt. You can either honor yourself or honor the excellence that's within you or dishonor yourself and suffer the consequence. You and I are trying to avoid the con falling for what they call the okie doke that keeps you in that negative cycle. Have you ever heard, what, what, what happened? Well, in the heat of the moment, I, you reacted versus respond. There's a wise, wise, wise quote from the late great Arthur Ashe that says, the wise decides and moves slowly but adheres fully to that decision. So power plugs, take your time. Don't allow anybody to rush you into the con, to rush you into the consequence. Take your time, pause, contemplate. What is the best decision to bring and honor the excellence within me? So there we were in the middle of that situation. And instead of giving in to despair, which would have been the unhealthy choice, I had a long talk with God and I had a long talk with my wife about that talk with God. Because when you're in that situation, everything that you believe in will come into question. What is it that I believe and what is it that I rely on? I say I rely on God. I say I believe in God. I say that I believe that he's a way maker. But that is lost in translation in this situation. So I have to embrace what I truly believe. I believe that everything happens for a reason. And I talk to my wife and I'm like, you know what? There's something that we're missing. There's something that we're missing. There is a blessing on the other side of this trial. I know it. I have no evidence of how this is going to turn out. I just believe that it will. And I believe that it will turn out for our good. I just know it. Everything that led up to this moment 
teaches me that, but it's lost in translation because I can't understand. I don't like my placement. I don't understand why I'm in this situation, but I'm going to honor my placement because there's a reason for this. I was tired of going through the same cycle. Maybe it's time to start relying on something other than what we have been. Maybe it's time to start rethinking how we operate because everything is shutting down. What I relied on just might not be there tomorrow. Guess what? Hospitals close. Guess what? Companies fold. Guess what? The danger level is great and the burnout rate is high. What gifts do I have? I asked my wife, what gifts do you have? Because we're gifted people. Maybe this is the opportunity to start developing those gifts. The gifts that come natural to us that we don't need anybody to produce that gift. That gift is not contingent upon anything else. This is the beautiful story of what transpired with my wife. So she's like, okay, yeah, I need to relax. So what does, what, what relaxes me? Hmm. You know, I paint when I relax. So she starts painting. And do you know that because she relaxed and relied on a gift that she had that had lied dormant for a while, that that was the birth of what it is that she is doing now? She is an artist who developed her gift and woke up the dormant gift within her because of the very thing that looked like it was there to destroy, the very thing that was there to bring prosperity to an end, to bring hope to an end. You know, I'm just busting my head against the wall because I'm trying and nobody's hiring. I'm trying to do the right thing, but the doors keep closing. Look within because power plugs, it's time that we start making our own doors. Do you know? In 2009, I had just moved to North Carolina and I, again, didn't quite understand my placement. At that time, I thought that my gift of and love of inspiring people was only possible through preaching from a pulpit. In a meeting with the new pastor of the church that I was attending, he asked me, what is it that you're into? And I told him about my background, but something strange happened. Do you ever wonder why something comes out your mouth? It, it just did. I said, you know, I really want to get into motivational speaking. And again, at this time, in 2009, there was another financial crisis where the banking industry took a serious hit and where I moved was the hub of most of the banking institutions in the United States. And you wouldn't think that the banking industry would have any bearing on hospitals. But guess what? There now was a hiring freeze at the hospitals. And I had just moved there months before when I had come to visit, they were like, oh, jobs are plentiful. Whenever you get here, just apply with your experience. You're a sure fit. Just anywhere you want, you have options. When I got there, nobody was hiring. So the minister says to me, he's like, oh, that's interesting, motivational speaking. Hmm, how would you work that out in, in this economy? And I was like, oh, you know, it, it, it was just some, some random thing that, that I just said. I, and I shut that thing down. Understanding on a higher level that there are different forms of currency 
that there are different, like everything that you do does not have to be motivated initially by money. When you honor your placement and you honor yourself, the value comes from you. And then people will see the value in what you're doing and then the money will come. When you honor your placement and you honor yourself, you never know how far your word, your encouraging word will reach. Once the pulpit was gone, does that mean my gift is gone? Absolutely not. I found that through the pen, I could write inspiring stories that could make people think and give people hope through through playwriting but then the pandemic happened and that was now gone this door closed this door closed and it's a hallway leading to the fact that i don't need a pulpit i don't need a stage i just need to rely on my voice rely on the gift that i was given and there will be a way to inspire people. We have to believe for something greater in our life. In spite of our situation, when we honor our placement, we will find that door. We will find that way. In scripture, there's a story of a young man who was paralyzed and he was stuck in his situation, <laughs> literally. But he had this group of friends and this group of friends, they believed. And they were like, you know what? We heard about this healer and we bet that if we get you to this healer, that he could help you. Okay, it's, it's worth like, what am I gonna do? So his group of friends carried him to the place where the great healer was. Now, when they got there, the place was packed. It was crowded. There was no way for them to get inside. I wonder what the conversation was like, you know what? Oh, well, uh, just, just take me back. No, the friends were like, no, man, we got you this far. I don't like my situation. I know this is uncomfortable, but we have an idea. We're going to climb up to the top of the roof of this place and we're going to cut a hole in the roof and we're going to let you down. You're going to do what? I'm you want me to you look, you carried me here. Okay. Now you want to carry me up on top of a roof? You're going to cut a hole in somebody's what? You want me to in my situation? What if you drop me? Just come on, man. So that's what they did. Okay. Was there a guarantee that once inside that the healer would even help this young man? with everything else that was going on. No, the group around him believed in spite of their placement. But honoring your placement, honoring yourself, places you in a situation where, hey, there might not be anything that you can do in the moment, but believe and a way will be made, even if it's not you who's doing it. But guess what? Other people's faith, other people's belief can only take you but so far. So they cut a hole in the roof. They let the paralyzed man down and the great healer had compassion upon the great lengths that they went through, the faith that had to be present for them to even get this far. How many obstacles were in their way, not liking their placement, not understanding their situation, 
that they just kept passing the test because guess what? Now is not the time to quit. Now is the time to press. Now is the time to keep pressing, to believe where you are for where you know you could be. Who do you rely on? You rely on that paycheck that may not be there that comes from someone else signing it? Or do you believe in the gift that was given you? So they let the paralyzed man down and the healer told him he had the power within himself to get up from there. You can get up. It was up for him to believe his situation. He said, get up, take up your mat that you had been laying on that had carried you for so many years. Pick up that mat and walk with it. That right there is power. The man got up and he took his mat and rolled it up and he carried it with him. What does that mean? You may not like your placement, but when you believe from where you are for where you know you're supposed to be, when you honor your placement, his placement was on that mat. He didn't say get rid of the mat. No, that's a part of your story. That's a part of your testimony. That's a, a reminder of where you were to where you are now. It's vital. The things that you've been through, the things that you've overcome, for you to see it now as a blessing instead of a curse. Oh, the songs, we're blessed. When we come and when we go, everything that I believed in, in spite of my placement, I honored that placement because I know what I have been through. I know without a shadow of a doubt just how far I've come. And I know that I did not come this far to allow this situation to defeat me. There is a blessing on the other side of it because I know from past times where I did not honor my placement, what happened. And then I know that the very next time that I got to the point of growth, that I could pass that test that, oh, wow, this was not meant to stop me. This was meant to be a blessing, not only to me, but to everyone who will listen and believe so they can believe their situation for more. See, there's a spiritual currency when you honor your placement, when you honor yourself, when you honor the excellence that's within you, trust and believe your situation. You can get up out of that Groundhog Day effect. You can get up out of those negative cycles that you can't see your way out of. I know from my life, the people that I've interviewed, there are people and our stories, they matter. The trials that we've overcome, they matter. They can help you for you to be able to help yourself. So the challenge question is this, are you tired of the Groundhog's Day effect that comes when you're presented with a situation and your choice is the same and you suffer from the con of the sequence? Are you ready to try something different? to rely on something greater, to rely on something higher? Are you ready to honor your placement and the excellence in your life? To change the narrative in your life? Take the next step. Invest in yourself and book a life strategy coaching session with me at www.beliefinteriordesign.com. Let's start the journey of making belief reality.